An apocalyptic soundtrack, but actually an impressive feat of construction. According to the People's Daily, this is the fourth day of the building of a 1,000-bed hospital in Wuhan, due to be completed by Sunday. This is the epicenter of this novel coronavirus. The numbers needing medical help in Hubei province are growing. More than 2,700 people have been diagnosed, 461 of them are severely ill and 81 have died. The Chinese government is under pressure, dispatching the Premier and Vice Premier to the Hubei region to assess the situation. Premier Li Keqiang promising to ship in more protection gear and medical teams and guaranteeing food supplies while later urging construction workers to hurry up with the hospital. The rate of infection and spread is still uncertain. A flu epidemic can kill tens or even hundreds of thousands. In other coronavirus outbreaks like SARS in the early 2000s, 800 died. But this is early days. Some experts at Imperial College London estimate that at the upper end, as many as 100,000 people could already be infected. However, while sicker people appear more vulnerable to the virus, this is not across the board. Well, the most recent reports, uh, there was a paper in The Lancet just came out, shows that actually it is quite a wide age range and not everyone who is ending up in hospital has risk factors. It does appear that people with diabetes or high blood pressure are at greater risk, but that doesn't mean to say that um, other people are spared. The suspicion is the coronavirus started here in the Wuhan seafood market, possibly from wild animals sold there. They've looked at the market itself to see if there was a virus in, in the market itself, like contamination. Um, and some of the samples from the environmental uh, sampling came back positive for novel coronavirus. Um, we understand that they are also testing animals. Um, we haven't heard of any positive animals that have come back. The virus has spread, but not in huge numbers to other countries. But many governments are taking their citizens out of Wuhan. The UK Foreign Office, though, has been accused of being slow. Very, very limited contact, to be honest. Um, they've not really reached out to the British expat community in Wuhan, and that's, that's been extremely disappointing for us. I find it a very scary situation to be in. would uh, very much like to be repatriated. And I would like it to be done so in a, in a safe manner where when we get back to the UK, we're quarantined so we cannot, there's no risk of spreading the virus to other people in the UK. And indeed tonight, the health secretary said they were advising people returning from China to isolate themselves for 14 days. The Foreign Office is rapidly advancing measures to bring UK nationals back from Hubei province. I've asked my officials to ensure there are appropriate measures in place upon arrival to look after them and to protect the public. The lockdown of Wuhan and surrounding cities continues, people only venturing out when they have to, and medical staff are said to be exhausted as the crisis shows no signs of abating. I just want to thank all the um, doctors and nurses in Wuhan who have been out fighting the virus. It's, uh, it's been really inspiring and they're very, very brave people. One report from China said that the infection has been passed on by people not knowing they're ill, making it harder to detect and easier to spread. The main symptoms, however, are fever, dry cough and shortness of breath. Well, earlier I spoke to Tang Bo inside Wuhan. He's a correspondent for the China Global Television Network, which is owned by the national broadcaster. And I asked him what had been happening in Wuhan today. Entrusted by President Xi Jinping, Premier Li Keqiang arrived on Monday in Wuhan to instruct on epidemic control and prevention efforts against the virus. He spoke through a walkie-talkie to an infected patient on video screen, and he met with and also encouraged frontline medical personnel. And Premier Li also visited the site where construction crews were busy building one of two new hospitals that health authorities ordered up to house those infected. He has declared that the country will spare no efforts to help complete the new hospital by February 3rd, and he is now leading a high-level group charged with fighting the outbreak. How are ordinary people reacting? I mean, do they feel that everything that should have been done has been done quickly enough? Or have there been failures? Yes, indeed, there are pressures from the public 
that they blaming the government, the local government was not react, reacting really quickly to the outbreak. And on Monday, the same day when the Premier Li Keqiang visited the city, the mayor of Wuhan city uh, received an interview from China State Television saying that um, he uh, will be able to take the responsibility of those disinformation and disclosure and the delay of the disclose, disclosure of the information. And he and also the leader of the CPC party committee of the city uh, uh, will, when necessary, to step down if they have to take the responsibility to, to better manage the uh, virus control and prevention efforts against it. Well, joining us now is Dr. Natalie McDermott, a clinical lecturer at King's College London, and Kerry Brown, director of the Lao China Institute, also at King's College, who was a British diplomat in Beijing at the time of the 2002 SARS outbreak. But first, Dr. Natalie McDermott, this interesting advisory from the government tonight uh, that people who return from the infected areas should self-isolate. Is that a, a technical term that you as a, an expert would regard as viable? Uh, well, obviously, any form of uh, trying to ask people to isolate themselves or quarantining involves the cooperation of those who are being quarantined or isolated. So uh, it is feasible, provided there is good information to the people who are being asked to self-isolate and the reasons behind it. Uh, and it's also wise because at the moment we're not sure if this virus uh, can spread at the point when people don't have symptoms yet. So uh, it appears that may be the case as there have been some cases in China that have done that. Uh, and so it would be wise for people who know they have traveled from an area or who've had contact to self-isolate themselves on coming back and avoid large gatherings of people. From your own expertise, have you been able in any sense in the last two or three weeks during which this has been happening uh, of understanding more about the coronavirus? Uh, I think we're understanding more as we watch it spread and as we see the extent of disease. Uh, there's still a lot for us to learn, and some of that will involve work inside a laboratory, not just the observation of what's happening, happening clinically. Uh, but I think that we're seeing uh, an infection that for most people is likely a relatively uh, mild form of influenza, but then for a certain group of people, particularly the elderly and those with medical problems, they're developing more severe infections and uh, pneumonia and inflammation in the lungs uh, and for a very small group of that group uh, a proportion are dying and that uh, then poses the question whether we really know how many people are really suffering from it Yes, I, I think it's difficult to know exactly how many because there may be some people who simply have a cough or a cold uh, or are just feeling a bit under the weather and they're not going to seek medical attention and then they may not be tested for it. So it's likely that there may be a large number of people who could be carrying the virus but not unwell enough to seek medical attention and so are not tested. From our own experience in Britain, we don't know anything about this particular virus because it hasn't been seen before, but we do, do know about SARS. Do we see much linkage? Uh, so the reports so far about the genetic makeup of this virus are that they are quite similar to SARS. There's about an 80 percent or so uh, match in terms of the genetic sequence. Uh, so it will behave in a similar manner. But the question is uh, that 20 percent difference. Uh, does that change how the virus behaves in terms of how infectious it is? And does it change uh, the severity of disease that you might get? And so far, this disease does not seem to be as severe uh, as the SARS in infection was. Uh, but obviously, we're still learning from this virus at the moment. Dr. McDermott, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Uh, well, now, uh, let, let me turn then to um, uh, Kerry Brown. And now, amazingly, you were actually a diplomat in Beijing during the, the SARS experience. Can you, in any way, from this detached position, uh, draw any comparisons? Is the control of the state just as absolute? Well, I think the uh, kind of idea in 2003, I think it was, when SARS really broke out in mainland China, uh, that the central government sort of lost control for a while. Uh, Beijing in the spring of that year was like a ghost city and the rest of the country, everyone sort of went into lockdown. Uh, but one of the complaints then was lack of information and the fact that until Wang Qishang was brought in really to control it as the sort of mayor of Beijing, uh, the head of Beijing, 
uh, there was no real leadership. So there was a lot of criticism. Uh, so do you now, see this one as having been much more effectively handled by the Chinese? Well, so far, I think they've acted very, very quickly, but they've also been criticised for that. So having complete lockdown in Wuhan and other places, you know, has created, in a sense, another sense of panic. Also, social media now is much, much stronger. And so people are spreading their own kind of news. That has sometimes been helpful, and sometimes, you know, the censors have had to pile in and stop. People are spreading news that's regarded as unhelpful. Is the government trusted more now? Well, that's questionable. I mean, Xi Jinping is the man who's meant to deal with crises, and he's regarded as a strong leader. So the logic would be he'd be able to deal with something like this, and that's what we're seeing happening at the moment. Is he able to do that? But there has also been domestic sort of criticism to some extent. Um, and I've even read accounts that he is regarded as having been somewhat damaged by this. Well, this is, I mean, the Communist Party of China under him is the ultimate risk manager and the ultimate crisis manager. And this is precisely the thing that I think people in other areas are happy to kind of live with, you know, kind of more repression because it's meant to be the party can deal with this. Uh, and the real problem at the moment is we don't know where this will end. If they do deal with it, and they may, and they may very well, uh, then that's fine. If they don't, then it is a legitimacy problem. Kerry Brown, thank you very much indeed for coming in.